God, your love has called us here as we by love for love were made. Your living likeness still we hear, though my dishonor disowned. Thank you, Mike. And Dan Leone is our assisting minister this evening. He's going to share our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others because Jesus was the servant of all. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading for this evening comes from the Gospel of John. We begin in the 13th chapter at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them, them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Little children, I am with you only a little time longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. People of faith, we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another. Maybe you know that one, but it's always good to be reminded of this. 
We love one another because Christ has first loved us. Our commitment to Jesus's loving service is made visible and it's signified in the washing of feet, following the example that our Lord gave us on the night before his death. So in service to one another, wash the feet or the hands of those that you are with. We wash our hands so much these days to stay healthy and in service to our neighbors, we're trying not to spread disease, right? We're trying to curb the spread of disease. But this touching the water and being with water is also a time to remember our baptisms. So even if you have nobody else's hands or feet to wash tonight, that doesn't matter. Wash your own hands, soak your own feet, take that ladle or cup or scoop and pour the water out and remember that you are a baptized child of God, that through Jesus's death and resurrection, we are connected to one another in the body of Christ. That is a promise made to us in our baptisms, that the Holy Spirit is with us always. That is a promise that is made to us in those baptismal waters. This is also a time to use ritual, that touching the water, pouring the water, to hear the water pour out and splash back in, remembering that Jesus Christ was poured out for us. And as we remember that, we pray for anyone that might come to your mind. You can scoop the water and pour it out. And each time you pour it, say out loud or to yourself the name of someone that you want to pray for or remember those among the living and those who have gone before us. Mike is going to share a song with us that reminds us about Jesus's servant. Yeah, we are called to be servant to one another. And as he plays, we will wash and we'll be in that gallery view so you can see what other people are doing. And then when the song is over, we will move into a time of prayer. So I invite you now to receive this song, to find your water, remove your shoes and your socks if you like. I'm gonna pour the water here, wash my own hands and have that baptismal reminder here. And I hope that you will, if you're with somebody else, touch that water and, uh, and have these remembrances together. Uh.
Dan will welcome us now into a time for our intercessory prayers. After the intercessory prayers, uh, Jean is going to share excerpts from Psalm 22, and I will strip our mini altar here. And during that time, I invite you, if you're on the phone, just listen and you can imagine what you have witnessed before in this space, watching the altar slowly uh, become more and more sparse and then that black cloth being draped over the cross. And then when that Psalm is concluded, this service ends in silence. There's no benediction because the service is not ended. This is the great three days. So we go from Monday, Thursday into Good Friday and then into Easter. So you can stay on the phone or on the video for a moment of silence. And then I'll just invite you to take your leave when you are ready to go. So first now, Dan, if you will lead us in prayer. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. Especially, Lord, we lift up those on the front lines during this coronavirus pandemic. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who are imprisoned persecuted, or martyred for their faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 